Hello everyone, welcome back to Delicate Cuts. So today we'll be taking a look at a fun and manageable problem from the Korea National Olympiad 2024. Now without further ado, let us take a look at the problem statement. So this is an algebra problem, and problem 5 over here is actually the first problem from the second half. So it's expected that this will be a manageable problem, and indeed we will see that the solution can be motivated. Here's the problem statement. Find the smallest real number m, such that this sum over here is always less than m, no matter how we choose the positive real numbers a1, a2, dot 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 a99. So let's study this sum a little further to understand what it means. So when k equals 1, we basically have a1, a2, a3 in the bottom, and the middle part a2 will be at the top. And then when k equals 2, we have a2, a3, a4, and then a3 will be at the top. So all the way until k equals 99, we have a99, loop back to a1 and a2, and then a1 is at the top. So over here, we see that a100 is taken to be a1, and a101 is taken to be a2. So basically what we have is, we put these numbers in a circle, we choose three terms at a time, three consecutive terms, and the middle term goes to the top, and we basically sum up over all possible triplets of three consecutive terms. We want this sum to be always less than m. So what is the tightest m that we can choose so that this sum will definitely always be kept by m? Okay. And before going to the solution, it turns out that the solution is actually quite easy to motivate. When you're faced with a problem like this, you might want to first try out some special cases or special values and see what values m might be. So if we try the obvious candidate of a1 equals a2 equals dot dot dot, all the terms are equal, then we see that each fraction here is going to be one third and this sum is going to be 33. So we have already shown that any such m must be bigger than 33. And interestingly, what we notice is that the answer cannot be 33 because over here we have a strict, uh, strict inequality. So if we put this scenario here, we already have 33. It cannot be less than 33. So any candidate for m is going to be larger than 33. And the fact that we have a strict inequality here suggests that we will never be able to attain the value m. So this is a very useful piece of information because it suggests that we can only get arbitrarily close to the uh, answer m, but we will never reach it. So something like this where everything is equal to a certain value is unlikely to give m. Instead, we might consider scenarios where we have numbers that get larger and larger and numbers that get smaller and smaller and see what happens. So this motivates us looking at well, can we make this as big as possible by looking at arbitrarily large and arbitrarily small numbers? And it turns out that, well, if we look at this being very large, the middle term, and the two side flank terms are very small, then this fraction by itself would be very close to 1. It's 1 minus a small amount, right? But unfortunately, as the numbers rotate, you cannot make every fraction of this form. So maybe the best you could do is alternate epsilon l, epsilon l, and so on. And in this case, at least you'll get quite a number of fractions being of this form. So indeed, if l is flanked by the two epsilon, then when we look at this triplet with l in the middle, we get 1 minus epsilon. Over here, we get again another such term where l is flanked by two epsilons and get 1 minus something small, and so on. And then of course, the epsilon terms itself is flanked by two l's, we'll get something incredibly small. So this suggests that, okay, if we do it like this, the left-hand side would be very close to 49. We don't know whether it's bigger or smaller or what, exactly 49, but it is a number that's around 49. So it suggests that, well, m might be maybe 49 or larger. Okay, keep that in mind. Can we get something even better for the left-hand side? You might see that since this 99 is an odd number, it seems quite wasteful to start with epsilon l epsilon because we have more epsilons than l, right? And you're wasting the epsilons because even at the end, you have epsilon over l plus epsilon plus epsilon. That is still going to be very small, right? 
So maybe you say, okay, can I start with L estate? So at least now I have more L's than epsilon, 50 L's and 49 epsilon. So for a term like this, where the L is in the middle of two epsilons, yes, we still get the fraction being one minus small. But what we notice is that at the end, this L here is flanked actually by epsilon and another L. So we have L over epsilon plus L plus L, that is about half. Same thing here, this L is flanked by a L and an epsilon. So again, it's going to be about half. So even if we do this scenario, where we have more L's epsilon. The left hand side is approximately 49. So this suggests that, okay, maybe the best we can do is 49. And we show that this is indeed the smallest real number that can bound this. Yeah, maybe we cannot do better than 49. So this suggests the following solution. We would want to show that this sum is always less than 49, no matter how we pick all these numbers. And from our analysis previously, we saw that you know, it makes sense to kind of pair terms up together. So this actually suggests us to look at uh, consecutive fractions. You see 49 is about half of 99, and what we saw earlier, we are alternating L and Epsilon in the final solution, on in the construction. So in the proof, maybe it helps to analyze consecutive pairs and see if we can bound this. And indeed, we see that if we have ABC and then BCD, right? So these are consecutive fractions inside this sum here. We see that we can actually very easily bound this. If we drop A here, this fraction is only going to go up. So this term is less than B over B plus C. Same thing here, if we drop the D, the denominator shrinks so the fraction goes up. It gets this inequality sign here. And this, the sum of two fractions here is exactly equal to one. So we have already made very good progress. The sum of two consecutive fractions is less than one. Now, unfortunately, we are not done yet because Annoyingly, 99 is an odd number, and we cannot pair up everything. See, if it were like k until 100 instead, we know for sure that, okay, you can pair up into 50 pairs, and then we get a bound of 50. In this case, we can't pair up. Even if we think that uh, there's a way to make us just divide 99 by 2, we will get 49.5. We can't get 49. So there is something else we need to do. We need to somehow make three terms uh, come together. You know, we only have 49 pairs by this proof and we have one left over which we cannot bound by itself. And we know that maybe the answer is 49 and not 50, right? So we are not quite done. We need to deal with that one left over. So can we combine three terms instead and make that less than one? But we know that this cannot be the case in general because then the answer will have been 33, right? So it must be that there's some special condition or special scenario in which you can combine three terms together. And indeed, if we happen to find the three consecutive terms such that the sum of the middle three, b plus c plus d, is less than or equal to the sum on its two sides, a plus b plus c, or n c plus d plus e, then we can write this inequality here where we replace a plus b plus c with the smaller b plus c plus d, which caused the fraction to go up. This one is unchanged. And same thing, c plus d plus e we replace with the smaller b plus c plus d, which caused the fractions to go up. And then this thing would be equal to 1. So in a special scenario, if we can somehow find a triplet like this, b, c, d, where the sum is less than its two side triplet sum, then we can combine that triplet and the remaining terms I put into pairs. And this is not difficult to then conclude the proof because we write the triplet sums in a circle like this. And what we see is that we cannot have uh, that condition not happening, right? Because if we keep decreasing the value as you go around a circle and eventually come back, the value will have been strictly smaller by the time we make a loop. So I'll leave you to check that there must be a dot where the values on its two sides are greater than or equal to 
the value itself. Okay, so this is not too hard to show. And once again, once you show this, the triplet of fractions is less than or equal to 1. And for the remaining fractions, we can combine them into consecutive pairs. They are each less than 1 with no special condition needed. And so the sum is less than 49. And of course, we can get arbitrarily close to 49 with the construction we showed earlier, epsilon l, epsilon l, dot, 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 where we let l get to infinity and epsilon get to zero. So, this is all there is to this question. I hope you found the question manageable, but still quite an interesting problem to look at. Now, stay tuned to the channel for more math videos, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.